You can't beat that. If you're going to start anywhere in the Bible, the best place to start is in the beginning. How many of y'all started from the beginning and read all the way through? Don't say nothing. Amen. Did you get through numbers? <laughs> now I'm just saying, because most people start reading the Bible. They do real good till they get the numbers. And then when you get the numbers, it started getting into a whole lot of begets. You, you think you're eating some kind of roll or something. <laughs> he begat, they begat, they begat. Now, how, how many of you know, though, now, as much as that seems so unimportant, all them begets and all that kind of stuff, it seemed really unimportant, but really there's so much in even that. You know, because mostly, you know, in, in the Hebrew culture, they didn't just name them. Shamika, you know, not even Kelly. <laughs> None of that. Every name had a meaning because it really matched their nature. Yes. So when you begin to read these names, a lot of times we read old, we don't even care what it said. We uh, look at it and say, man, I can't pronounce it, so I don't care what it says. So we just go on. Right? right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, you know, and I, I'm not here to make you feel bad. I know, you know. I mean, I, I'm just being honest. I, I just took a different approach when I started reading stuff because I believe that every word, because most people say I believe every word in the Bible. You, you can't even pronounce half of them. <laughs> and then you think, so what part of that did you use? that you couldn't pronounce. But what I'm saying is, I, 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 don't get me wrong, I'm not, a, I'm not asking you to go home and read all the names so you can say I read all the Bible. But what I am saying, though, they are there for a reason. And when you get really serious about studying the Bible, you want to study those names because they got a message in them too. The whole book of Genesis, matter of fact, it's one of the most Dynamic books you can read. Matter of fact, if you can't get your salvation and everything else in the book of Genesis, you might as well throw the whole Bible away. Everything you need to know is right there. If I had one book of the Bible that I could live with, it'd be the book of Genesis. It tells me everything I need to know. It lays a foundation for God that will never change. All those things were the beginning, and all those things are still being of hell. There are certain laws. Matter of fact, the greatest laws of God was given in the book of Genesis. Most people thought it was the Ten Commandments. No. He called them the lesser laws in the book of Matthew. So the greater laws that you're going to find is going to be in the book of Genesis. He just so happened to have ten of them. <laughs> wow, he does up. And we read all over them and then turn around and try to kill everybody with the ones that's lesser. But anyway, we're not going to get into that tonight. But let me just give this to you, the little clue on where to find the greatest commandments of God in the Bible. Everywhere you read in the book of Genesis, and it says, and God said, that becomes a commandment. Not only does he see it, but it brings it into existence. That's why, well, I'll get into that later, but it says, Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God called Brother Wilson. Oh, he didn't call me? Well, it almost seemed like he should have called me because I could have told him some things that I've learned since I've been here. <laughs> but in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, we probably could spend a night just talking about that part of that. But I'm, I'm not, I just want to let you look at this. 
And you notice one thing. Who did it? With who? He didn't have no help. Keep that in mind. <laughs> I want you to keep that in mind. Matter of fact, the Bible doesn't even say that. Substantiate that truth. He said when he created everything, he did it all by himself. So it means he didn't have no other input. He didn't have no one in his ear saying, I think you should do this. So the whole idea of creation, everything about creation is about God. He done it by himself. Didn't need any, not any help. Now that alone blows my mind. Because first thing it does for me, it makes me ask the question, how big is this God? Not, not only just how big is this God, but we, I have used human terms like just how intelligent is this God? See, I'm, all, I'm still fascinated by me. <laughs> I'm fascinated by the things that I, I'm capable of doing. Don't know how this stuff all forms up. You know, it's so mind-boggling to think that something begins so small can grow up to be, well, some bigger than others, but anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to be bigger than others. But I, what I'm saying is what, we, what God put in motion that allows us to even reproduce and bring something into this world. We don't know whether it's going to be a Jeffrey Dahmer. We don't. We don't know what. We have no idea. We're hoping that somehow genetics are passed on, good ones, not the bad ones. But God gave us all, put this all in us because he was a creator. So, I'm, you know, when I look at creation and I look at him being the creator, that kind of changed a lot of things. And I, I'll be honest with you, I think in the beginning when I started serving God, I knew he was a creator because I had read the Bible and I saw, could not refute Genesis chapter one. I understood he was a creator, but I probably felt like most people feel. He is a creator, but he's not always in touch with it. Because every time I saw some cataclysmic happening in the world, Christian moss would go up. You know what we usually ask ourselves when we see those things happen? Why did God let that happen? God surely cannot be in control. The devil is wrecking havoc all over the world. God, where is God? Well, we get those questions in our mind. I understand that. Because sometimes we forget we haven't believed Genesis chapter 1 yet. See, it is possible for me to have all the scriptures and I can have a mental assent to say, yes, I believe that is true. While yet not really experiencing the truth that I say I believe. You know, everything fans out to something. You know, and where, where we lack in faith, it shows up. Where we lack in trust, it shows up. Because God is really in Control. And that's hard for us to think that somehow we can't vote him in. <laughs> I 
Because we really think that if we get majority vote, we got God. We need to understand one thing. God was long before all the things we try to get now to control him with, he was long before that. You can't use none of that to change him. God will never change. So what is the difference if I don't believe? What happens if I don't believe that God is the creator? You want me to tell you part of the problem we have today in Christendom? Because most of us don't believe he has or was the creator. So that sends us in derision because it sends too many questions to our mind because we're constantly quizzing God about our life that he's supposed to be the creator of. And then we become like those people in Jeremiah question the potter. Right? Ask him what? Have you, since you've been reading the Bible, have you ever noticed even when the men did ask him why he never answered? So now why, so why, why wouldn't it, it to me, is a futile effort to go and ask him why? Because he will show you why. That's why you were having the experience. He's not going to tell me why. He's just going to let me have the experience so I'll know why. Right? Because I believe that all things, all things, I want to move off to all things here if you think there may be something else out there. See, See we got to, this is reason why I'm, when I say you build on the foundation, there are certain things that you got to put in that foundation for it to work. And so there are certain things that God has deemed necessary because not a one of us showed up knowing exactly the purpose. If you knew, you know, if you already knew, you don't have to believe. Faith would be unnecessary. If I already knew tomorrow, let me see, what could I say? Speak it into existence. If I already knew tomorrow that I got $300 million in my bank account, I don't care how broke I am tonight, I'm going to be happy. <laughs> if I knew that, right? So I ain't going to have to believe God for tomorrow if I know I got that tomorrow. But see, walking by faith is just that. You're stepping in places where you've never been because if you've been there, you don't need faith to get there. You already know how to get there, right? This is why most people don't grow in God because they don't want to take a step in God that they've never taken before. They would rather walk in a path that they've been Familiar with. Because when I'm familiar, I don't need faith. You know, I don't have to ask God in the morning, should I have smoked sausage and eggs? Because I'm familiar with that. The only reason I have to ask him because I look in the refrigerator, ain't got no food and no money. Then it would be time for me and him to talk. I need to ask him a question. Here I is. Yeah. But see the, you know, we've been messed up educationally and I'm not against education. I believe in it strongly. But I think in some of our teachings, secular teachings, in which you're learning how to make man better without God is a mistake. 
He can't get better without God. You know what the Bible said? He said that God created them in his image and in his likeness. And so we need to find out what was the image that Adam was created in. Because sometimes we think that God looked like man. Now, God is a spirit. So the image he put in man was not the outer man, but it was the inner man. You know how I know that? Because when God wanted to express himself to us, he came in the likeness of sinful flesh to express God to us. Because the Bible says in Hebrew that he is the expressed image of God. He is the expressed personality. So it lets me know he had to come look like me so he could, I could get a rebirth to look like him. See, I see that Adam lost that image. He didn't lose this image, but he lost the image that God gave him that looked like him. And that's why man, when he left the garden, the only thing we could produce is after our own kind. That's why the Bible tells you all in Adam, they die. And all in him, all in Christ, is made alive, live. So when we, you know, even our concept, we say, well, boy, we, we're made in the image and likeness of God. Was. But now Jesus has come to rebirth us so that we will once again have the image of God. Because we lost that. Do you see that one? Okay. So that same image uh, that he came and the Bible talks about in Hebrews how he who been in brightness of his glory and expressed image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. That's why sometimes when we go to make images of whatever we call Jesus, that's not the image. He, he never intended for you to take the image of man to make the image of God. That's right. That's right. Thou shalt not make unto thyselves any. Remember that scripture there? Man, we violated that bad too, didn't we? Everything he said not to do, we done it. Because he's not like us. The Bible says in Psalm, the reason the Jews got in trouble because they had a thought that God was just like them. But instead, God was trying to make them like him, but he couldn't do it without restoration. He couldn't do it without reconciliation. He could not do that until he could tear down the middle wall of petition that separated him from you. That was your flesh. He made a way through his flesh first so that he could make a way into your flesh. Now you can make a way into, through his flesh to his throne. That's the reason why we have access to God. We, we need to understand is that we have this postponement, God on vacation kind of mentality when it comes to God. God doesn't take a day off. God doesn't have downtime. He's so constant. He doesn't sleep. Can't understand how. A lot of things I don't understand about God. But he never sleeps. It seems like he never gets tired, I guess. I'm not quite sure how all that work. But I do know that he wanted you to take on his image. Now he's going to let you sleep. Because he give his saints sleep. Give you rest. Only he can do that. So he said, but he uphold. Listen to Hebrews 1 and 3. Uh, this one part I really like. 
Yeah. Who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, upholding a few things. Man. See, Dr. Booker ain't got a Bible over she know that. Upholding all that that word that A L L at A L L A L L yeah A L L word that thing keeps popping up like a bad sore. You know what I'm saying? Now he says here that his word upholds, undergirds, keeps in place. All things. Do you believe that? This is really rhetorical. You ain't got to tell me today. Because see what happens. <laughs> I love when y'all say amen. Because see, when you say amen, you, you, you're giving God permission now to do it. You know what I'm saying? So be it. That's what you're saying. So be it. So upholding all things by the power of his word. All things. In other words, that's not one thing that's not under the control of the words of his power. Not anything. What do you like it or not? What do you think is good, evil, or indifferent? It does not matter. His word is upholding all things. You know, See, that's a lot of things about God you're going to get a headache trying to figure out because number one, your brains ain't big enough. You got to remember, he's the one who gave you sense. So do you honestly think you're going to have more sense than the one who gave you sense? Or do you think you'll be more wiser than the one who had all wisdom? Huh? Have you ever thought about that? Because most people really think that somehow they know more than God do. And he's the one who gave them the sense. And here they are questioning the teacher. You worse than me when I went into the army. I told you, I tried to change them. I just showed up. <laughs> I was going to change their whole program. I told the dude, man, well, I'm, this ain't even making sense. You know, he was so nice to me. He could have really hurt my feelings. But he just real nice. He said, son, what we've been doing here, we've been doing here for almost 100 years. And you only got here, you've been here, what, five minutes? He made a lot of sense. You know, some of y'all need to take a page out of my book when it comes to God. You ain't been here, but you ain't, your vape ain't even rose yet. <laughs> Because the Bible says your life ain't but a vapor. You ain't, by the time you raise up, you already gone. And here you are trying to tell the one who made vapor how to run the show. Now, does that make sense? No. But when you don't believe he is the creator and you think that he left you to create your own mess. That's why you're in a mess. I got to believe that he is a creator, not just a creator, but that when God put me here on earth, allowed me to be here, he had a real purpose for Kelly Wilson. Right? It's not until we finally come to, that, to terms with that that I think our confidence in God begins to grow. Our trust in God begins to grow. And all of a sudden, the scriptures that, he used, that we used to read that we had, kind of like uh, uh, disclaimers on. Yeah, we had disclaimers on. We know, that, we know that all things work together for good, but that but is a disclaimer. And what it really told me that you really didn't know that you just said. You may have quoted it, but you didn't know that. See, we got a lot of facts that we can do. Matter of fact, most people live a scientific, spiritual life. 
That's one jump on me not too long ago. And told me, I, I, I believe in science. I, I ain't saying, I ain't trying to knock science. It has its place. It has its place. I, I enjoy a study even if it ain't good. I, I study science. I love all that stuff. And I see where they got a lot of messed up stuff in science and, you know, give you all type of facts. And You know, the strange thing about it, they didn't create nothing. So, you know, if I'm going to really appeal to somebody in science, I need to appeal to the real mind of science. See, God says some things, and we have spent years, thousands of years, trying to disprove, refute, go against. You know, it's almost like there's something wrong with you today if you don't believe a certain way. And we're trying to give credence to a whole lot of things that ain't got nothing to do with God whatsoever. Because we not believe that he is the creator. So the Bible talks about in Matthew chapter 6. Let me turn now. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. I think we mentioned it before. And I think what our problem is we don't know where to pump the brakes at. We don't know where the lines are drawn. We don't really know how to balance, you know, the Bible talks about walking circumspectly. It's, it's really getting your life balanced out. See, I don't, I don't you know, I, I like basketball, I like football, I like fishing, I like a lot of things. It's part of human nature. But I don't want to ever try to make spiritual things corner things. I don't want to ever try to tell myself that I'm, I'm down here fishing and there's something real holy about it. No, I like fishing. I, I, you know, I can't, I'd hate for someone to get up and preach and say it's a sin, but they ain't going to change me though. But I like fishing. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I'm down here fishing, speaking in tongues. Every now and then I do have some moments. But I'm down here fishing to enjoy myself. Some people can't even enjoy themselves because they painted them up, them, themselves into a corner. And they feel if they get happy, they're going to fail God. I came into this thing. People try to stop me from smiling. They told me I was smiling too much. Oh, you, you just wait. You, you, you smiling now. God going to wipe that up. I mean, really. No wonder most people run from this stuff. Because they told me that. No, you smile too much. I said, how can you not smile? You tell me you say. You should be the happiest person in the world. And you telling me God don't want you to smile because if you smile, it'll make you look like you ain't serious? But that's what I was told. And here is God creating fish, little bammies, all kinds of things for you to enjoy. And you can't enjoy none of them because you, you're too serious. I'm serious about God. How serious are you? You want to talk to him? It seemed like if you were that serious, he'd talk to you. I would think. Yeah. You know, I see serious people. I want to talk to them seriously. <laughs> so if you were that serious, I'm sure that God could see that and he would come down and do have a serious conversation with you. But anyway. No man, 624, no man can serve. How many of you believe that? Not really believe it. I'm, I'm just, just rhetorical. I don't want you to say amen on this because, because see, one thing about God, he, he knows how to remove masters. 
until he take your master away. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't know who the master is so God started messing with it. And then when God started messing with the master, sometimes we get real angry. What's got control of your life? Who, who really controls your life? I mean, we got, we got to figure this out. Who are we really serving? What, what, what makes you more upset than anything? Is it because you ain't talked to God? Does that really irk you? Are you mad he ain't talked to you? Let's be honest. We don't mind if God just stay and mind his own business. We'll call him when we need it. No? Am I wrong? I believe I'm wrong. I'm in the wrong place. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but really, we really don't want God involved in our everyday affairs. We'd rather him just come when we tell him, well, I've done the best I can do now. I got it all messed up. I need you. You know what would be good? If we woke up every day knowing we need him today. Huh? Wouldn't it be great if you could wake up every day, no matter if all your bills are paid, but you still need him? Huh? Wouldn't it be great just because your refrigerator is full, got 13 pairs of shoes on your bed, 50 changes of clothes in the closet? Wouldn't it be really nice if you could get up and say, I still need you. But most of the time, he can't get that from us because we don't need him every day. We don't think about needing him every day. Get a pain in the chest. Oh, need you. Come, come, Jesus, quick. <laughs> I'm about to die. Why don't you go on and die? Uh-oh. Oh, I forgot. There ain't no sense in dying because you're supposed to go to heaven after you die. And you told me that was a better place. I guess you don't like better places. Do you? <laughs> we, just, we just like the Jews when they was in Egypt. I know when Pharaoh... He came to Pharaoh and told him, I'm, I'm going to send these frogs away. All you got to do, he said, no. I think we're going to sleep with these frogs one more night. That's, that's the way the saints are today. Now, it's bad. <laughs> Let us sleep with the frogs another night. I, ain't, I don't want to go over there yet. Well, no, I, I know it sounds funny. I ain't trying to be funny, but I'm just being, because you know what? We need to come back and realize, do we really believe that our God is a creator, that he is the creator? Because if he is the creator, then I, I should not be worried about whether or not I have a heart attack tonight or, or, or five weeks from now. It shouldn't even bother me at all. You know why? Because everything is in No, he, not what I'm hearing. He lost control a long time ago. Somehow or another, he didn't get enough people in the Senate or something. Anyway, <laughs> no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve. You cannot. You cannot serve God and man. Well, Brother Wilson, I, I don't, I'm, I'm doing good with God. Where is our faith at? What are we worried about then? If God is in control and you are his people, what are you worried about? I know. Man, 
man, we're going to lose all the money. We're going to lose everything. You know why God is so good? We done read these stories. We've made them stories now. Made movies out of them. And now they don't mean nothing to them. But, but remember, God always came through for his people. Always. And some of them had heads harder than lead. But yet, he came through. Because there's something about God is that, as Moses told him one time before, man, if you, God was going to kill him. It looked like he was upset with him. Moses, you don't get down there, man. He said, I'm going to wipe out all of them. He said, now can I wipe them out? I'm going to start a new nation with you. I don't need a bunch of them to do it. I just take you and start a whole new nation. And Moses stood in there and said, oh, Lord, if you take them, take me. He said, because the problem was, Moses said, everybody's going to be sin. You was able to bring them out, but you couldn't bring them in. That same words is echoing now. God is able to bring you out. Is he able to bring you in, though? Because he wasn't just bringing you out. And I think this is where most people don't understand Pentecost was to bring you out of something. But it was also to bring you into something. And most people can tell you where they came out of, but they can't tell you what they've been brought into. So that's a real problem because don't, I mean, even getting excited about being brought out is good because you know what they've done when they got brought out? They got manna every day. They got shoes that never wore out and clothes that didn't wear out. God took care of them every day. Water, rain, drinking from the rock, all of that. So you can be enjoying existing, coming out. But eventually, God desires to bring you into something, not just bring you out. We have bragged and boasted about how long we've been out. We need to start testifying of what we done got in. Because he brought you out to bring you in to something. And one thing that I do know he brought us into was his rest. And if he can't, you'll never recognize the power of the creator without resting with him. Because there are things that God wants to show you that you can't see on your own. There is nothing like God showing you himself. Not you just have an imagination about some God that you heard about, but the real true God. He wants to reveal himself to you like he did to Adam. You have that image in you now. The Holy Ghost was that image he put in you. That new man that is after the image of Christ. So we need to allow that creator to do what he done in the beginning. Be still so he can be God. How I many of you know Adam probably wasn't moving when God was doing his thing? You ever thought about that? Big old hunk of dirt laying out here? He laying out here, man. And it, and it seemed like God took personal uh, Action to form. See, a lot of things just spoke. But Adam, he formed him. In other words, he used his hands or whatever he had to form this man and be very personal with him. And so I think that just knowing how God felt about man and what man was because I, I believe we are the crowning glory of the sixth day of creation. I believe what he done with man, it was so great that even the angels, I don't know what day they came in. I'm not trying to figure that out. A lot of people got more sense than I have. They were back there then, I wasn't. So I'm not going to argue about when the angels showed up. Some people are going to tell you, well, boy, yeah, the angels was there. I don't know when they showed up. I just know in the beginning it was God. 
I know somewhere along the line there was some more things, and then I don't even know whether they were there then or not. I have no idea. We can't argue some things because we wasn't there. So I don't even try to argue that, but anyway, I know they looked at what God done. I know they looked at it and wondered how could God be so personal with something so uh, frail, powerless, said they want to even look into that God would invest. You, you need to understand, the Holy Ghost ain't in you just so you can speak in tongues. Amen. The Holy Ghost is God's investment. He invested himself, and when he came with an investment, he didn't just invest pennies, but he gave you the riches of his wisdom and the riches of his grace when he invested the Holy Ghost in your life. So, you, you know, you may be dumber than a sack of bricks in school, but you ain't got to be dumber than a sack of bricks in God because his wisdom outdoes the school stuff. It will. That's why the Bible talks about his wisdom. That cometh down from above. Peaceful. Not sensual. His wisdom. Perfect. And when God gave you the Holy Ghost, see, some people thought they had the Holy Ghost so we could sing in choir. Well, I did. I, 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 I had to get the Holy Ghost so I could sing a special that Sunday night. Didn't work for you? No. <laughs> it didn't get it. Well, I said, you know, sometimes he come in, he, 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 you might have got up too fast. You probably going to give you that voice, but you, you, probably, you probably got up too quick. He, yeah, tell them to give you the rest of it. <laughs> but, but God invested in us. And, that, and this is what's really good. This is what ought to make you happy. God could have invested in anything he wanted to. He could have horses running the country instead of you. But he, he desired to invest in a man. But I know that he had future plans. It wasn't just he wanted a man. He just, he wanted a special kind of man. For you to be saved, I don't know how special you are because God wanted something really special. It's so special that I get to thinking about it. Because if I was God, I don't think I could put up with everybody. I, I, don't, I don't think I would put up with everybody. I will give you three strikes an hour. Then I'm going to cut off your oxygen supply. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm not God. But then I would think about that until my three strikes came up. And then all of a sudden, you know, aren't we all like that? Hmm? Kill the man. Kill him until it's your turn. And then all of a sudden now, you want to see another side of God. You know, you want to see another side of God. Now all of a sudden, because you know what? A lot of times we are like this. Very much like that. We don't want to see a side of God until it's necessary. When all the while God's been trying to show you that side all the time. That's why people have failed before you because God's trying to show you something. You think it's their failure, but then again, it's not their failure. It becomes your failure because you failed to do what you were supposed to do. And you say, well, I had nothing to do with that. That's the whole problem. You did. Because, see, you should have showed mercy. You see, if you are the expressed 
image of God, then you're supposed to be acting like he would. Our world would be different if we was trying to express Jesus and not express man. We want to have an expression that solidifies our human natures. That's why people talk about coming together. We got all become one. You ain't going to never get together in the flesh, friend. That's too many problems in the flesh to even think you can get together in the flesh. It'll never happen. But I tell you where we will become one at. When we learn that we have all been baptized into one body by how many spirits? Just one spirit. God knows no man after the flesh, but he knows all his people by spirit. That's the why God, I know God ain't talking to flesh. If you're not hearing him in the spirit, you're not hearing him at all. Because the Bible says in the book of Revelation, hear what the spirit is saying unto the church. And so if he, if he gonna be talking spiritual to you, then he's going to be telling you spiritual things. I'm not telling you he can't tell you natural things. I'm sure if that, if that is needed, he'll speak to you about that. But his most important thing he wants to talk to you about is the spirit, man, that he gave you. The one that's supposed to express his likeness, the one that expresses his image. The one that when people see it, they may not know who you are, but they say, like they said in the book of Acts, we proceed. We perceive these people, they've been with Jesus. You know why? Hmm? Because we're doing some expression. And, and when we start expressing him, because you know what we're trying to do, we're trying to express humanity. And see, humanity, you know, is flesh begetting flesh. We're thinking we can make a better flesh. Man, if I could just send them to therapy, they'll be, they'll be better. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. That's why you're not go to 12 steps. Yeah, it ain't, I didn't go to 12 steps because, see, I, I knew it wasn't for me when they told me when I got through and completed my 12 steps. I was going to have to testify every time we had a meeting. <laughs> I'm an overcoming alcoholic. I'll always be an alcoholic. Y'all pray for my sobriety. I can't get up and testify that I'm, a, I'm an overcoming alcoholic and always going to be one. Because if I'm going to be that, then I'm, I ain't looking for no real deliverance, am I? No. I, I didn't go to 12 steps. I knew it didn't take but one. Just one. Yeah, just one. But he said, therefore, I say, you take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet your body, what you put on it, not the life. It's not the life more than meat, the body than raiment. Them questions we have to ask ourselves. What, what, does they, what do they mean to you? I mean, how do you perceive these things? How do you look at them? You know, I, I, I've seen people say stuff like, man, you know, even myself. I, ain't, I don't even talk about nobody else. I, ain't, I don't even have to speak to nobody but me. Have you ever seen things in your life you thought you couldn't live without? You had to get it. And you got it. And it didn't mean nothing like you desires you had for it. Can you imagine what, if we had the same desire to get for stuff that we had for God? Can you imagine what would happen to us? You know, you, you, you see a thing, man, I, I got a head at. That's the last thing I do, I got a head at. What would happen if we had the same desire for God? Is there anything in God that you have to have right now? Is there anything in God that you desire right now? Is there anything in God that you feel like, man, I need a hell that I can't live without it? But we have found many things in this world 
that we feel like even a failure if we don't get it. Behold the fowls of the earth, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Mm -mm. But, but Brother Wilson, you don't understand. Someone told me the other day, people are going hungry. I don't know. They may be. I don't know. I haven't found them. You know, I'm almost like David. I was young. Now I'm old. I've never seen a seed big and bread. Maybe I ain't looking in the right place. I, 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 maybe David had never went outside his castle. Maybe I haven't seen him. I haven't seen everything. But I do believe the God I serve. He will want to make sure that I'm going to eat. I'm going to have some raiment. No, it may not be Versace or Gucci. <laughs> may not be none of them. But it didn't say I had to wear those to be in the kingdom. Amen. Right? Nah, I'm telling you, it takes so much humility to be saved. It really do. Because, man, the more I look at this word, he began to show me things like this. Because a lot of these things in my life was priorities. I couldn't wear, after a while, you know, you graduated in life. And I guess so I couldn't wear but a certain kind of tie. I know, I know. I found it and went, you know what I done? I had to break myself. I started going to Walmart because, see, that was a time. I messed around and started graduating and said, man, I don't shop in no Walmart. They ain't gonna, that can't sell me nothing. Why? why? Why is it a sin to wear something from Walmart? Very few people who call themselves somebody in God He's going to go to Walmart and dress up for Sunday. Now, we, we'll go to some other store. But we don't want that tag. Yeah. Oh, man, they, they got that at Walmart. <laughs> you know how much they pay for that? <laughs> well, man, you say, what do you want to laugh? Oh, you want to laugh. See, I, I don't have a problem with that no more. I have no problem. I don't need the word the best. I, I, don't need, I don't need a $75 tie, a $100 tie. I don't need a $1,500 belt. Don't get me wrong. I ain't paid no $1,500 for no belt, but I had a preacher. I had a preacher was saying he spent $1,500 for a belt that didn't have had the same amount of holes as this one did. And I got this at Walmart here. I showed it. And, 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 and only thing you can do is hold your pants up. That's, I promise you. I have wore some expensive belt, but Walmart, I found out them belts work. They've been lasting me a long time, too. The only thing messes with them now is when I fluctuate in weight. Sometimes put a lot of pressure. <laughs> a lot of pressure on them little holes right there and started cracking up on me. But other than that, we're good. Praise God. But he said, behold, here's the fowls of the air. He feeds them. But the question he asks you, are you? And you need to answer that. Because if you're sitting here complaining about a lot of things that God has, really has in place for you, what he's trying to tell you, check yourself. You need to check this. You are here complaining. You ain't noticed what I've been doing. Every file in the air. Ain't none of them suffering from starvation. Not a one of them. All these things he's done, and then he says, are you not more than them? 
Then you ask yourself, am I, am I better than a bird? I am. Yeah, because as far as I'm concerned, there ain't but a couple of them I like. Chicken. I love chicken. And I, now he's good, but I'm better. I got a graveyard right here. Chicken graveyard. See, it's so good. They say the stuff you love, put it close to your heart. That's when I love chicken. God feeds every last one of them. He helped me to help them become a part of his program. <laughs> See y'all laughing again? You thought he just put that chicken out there for nothing? God knew when I was coming. He knew I was going to be here. And I, I can see him when I was born on that Tuesday morning, March the 31st. That's on Tuesday. I just went on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday morning. He said, now that guy, I'm going to make sure he gets a lot of chickens. And they, I've been eating chicken ever since. And here y'all are not knowing that God's got a chicken out there for y'all too. Mm -hmm. You got one for everybody. You don't like chicken, he probably got something else for y'all. But he's telling you right now, are you not more? Do you not consider yourself worth more than a bird? Now, because if you do, then you should have this understanding. If I'm worth more than a bird and God is taking care of a bird who can't do the but mess up people's cars and all kind of stuff, but I'm taking care of him. Are you more than that? Are you not much more than a bird? Praise God. Which of you, taking thoughts, can add one cubit unto his stature? Nobody. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider lids of the field, how they grow, tall not need to do they spend. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed in one of these. You know what, what we've done is that we've traded God's clothing for ours. Samson had the greatest, that dude was rich. He, he, he was one of the richest kings in the Bible. He was the Bill Gates of the Bible. And I can't even imagine. See, because a lot of us think that these guys back in these days was kind of uh, primitive. But you really need to go back and study history. We, we got more primitive as we went along. They had a lot more sense back then. They were closer to the wisdom that came from the beginning than we are right now. We so far away from it right now, we almost in the, uh, having a bad case of stupidity. But they were closer to wisdom, so they were able to do a lot of things that blows my mind even today. When you go back and think about all the things they've done and how they, how they came up with all this idea with the gold and all that, I'm still trying to figure out how they know all that stuff. How they know where to find all that stuff. But yet they had all that, and, 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 and Solomon, he was decked. Not only was Solomon decked, his, all his servants was wearing Versace. Even that queen of Sheba said, man, look at here. She said, I'm overwhelmed. I'm looking at your servants going in and out. I'm just overwhelmed. Now here, he's got all this stuff on. And God really knows how to make us humble. He go ahead and close a lily. We don't work 40 hours a week. Overtime. To get that one uniform that we hope somebody going to brag on. Oh, you sure look sharp. And you still don't look as good as a lily. Isn't that something? Sister Book, all this stuff I go through. 
trying to trying to get my stuff together, matching, you know. And then I get here to find out that there is a lily out there in the field that's dressed better than me, and I don't put all this energy in here. Going through all these different changes. So guess how, what will make you look better than a lily? His glory. And so if you let him clothe you in his glory, because most people are trying to give something they don't have. We're trying to give God glory, but get his glory. He wants to give you glory first so that you can give to him the glory he gave to you. Glorify thy me with the glory I have with the end of the beginning. So he wants to glorify you so you can give glory back to God. It's not, it's not your creation. It's his creation. Praise God. Take no thought. Sit a little. Okay, let, let's, let's move on from now. Let's keep going. I thought I'd just throw that in there. Because sometimes I think in our talking about God, and I, and I feel like even this week as I was just sitting there thinking, there has seemed to be such a chasm between what we know and what we're able to believe. I don't doubt what we know. I know we don't. I, if I took a poll tonight and said, how I many of y'all believe that God has created? Everybody would say yes. But there's such a chasm between the head knowledge we have and the faith that we have from that head knowledge in expressing this faith. Because how we express that faith says a lot about how we perceive God. If everything happened in our life is that we are falling apart because we haven't believed some things about God. If every time some traumatic happened in your life and you feel like you're being poured out like water, Sometimes it's because we don't have a real perception of God. There are things in God that we can't escape. There are things that he even promises you. He said in this life, you shall have. And we run. We run so hard, please. God, no, no tribulation. But see, it's in those tribulations that you're going to learn some things about God, though. But we don't want to experience God. Knowing the Bible is not the same as knowing God. Knowing the Bible means you know something about God, but don't mean that you know God. And most people believe if I know the Bible, that means I know God. I, I've read books. I know the book, but I didn't know the author of the book. I've had, uh, I have met some men who wrote books that I bought, met them in person, and we discussed the thing they wrote about. That's a totally different thing, because then he's telling me things, how he got there, and all kind of stuff. The things he began to share with me then that I would have never picked up in the book. It's just like people with God is that we, we sometimes think that God has always been way off, but God has always been directing his people, all right? Abraham couldn't have went to Sunday school and learned what he learned from God. There was no Sunday school teaching him how to take a boy up and sacrifice him. That, he didn't have a preacher to get up one day and say, hey, God showed me, hey, <laughs> you getting ready to go on a journey. And God getting ready to take us. No, he heard God. He heard from God. And now you're going to tell me now, 
God can speak to Abraham. He speak to all these other people, but somehow he can't speak to you. Is there something wrong with that picture? If he ever had anybody he wanted to talk to, it would be you. Yeah. That's why the Bible in Hebrew says, in sundry's time, divers' manners, God spoke through divers' manners sundry's time. But in his last days, he spoke to us by a son, meaning Jesus. Long time ago, he used burning bushes. He used mules, crow. He used roosters. He used all kind of things to speak to man. But now he says, I have one conduit to speak to man now. I'm going to speak to him by a son, through the son, which is none other than Jesus himself. So now he wants you to have a relationship with him where he can talk to you. You know, it's scary because when you say the law can speak to you, it's because we don't like to hear his voice telling us things that we haven't already dialed into. There are certain things that God can't tell us because we're not dialed into that because we have already got our mindset where anything like a, you know, they used to kill me, say, man, God ain't sending no more new revelation. Mm. I felt like I fell out of a tree because I'm saying he ain't. Well, now I must be getting messed up then because ever since I've been in this Bible, this Bible is one of the greatest revealers. And when you hook Holy Ghost with the Bible and allow him to be the interpreter and the director, he'll give you a Bible study. I ain't talking, I'm not talking about, he beats me. He will give you a real Bible study. Because when he gets through talking to you, you'll know you've heard from him. But we don't know what to expect when God will speak. See, I, don't, I, I thought he'd probably come to me speaking old English since I read the King James Version. Right? Is doused? Is that youth? <laughs> Kelly? Kellyeth? No, no, I'm just playing. But seriously, because I, I never knew what to listen for. I used to pray, and I will get down, and I, and I want to hear him talk like he's from England. I figured if God's going to speak, he sound like that. I know, I know. But no, he's going to talk the way you can understand him. And that's what we don't trust, is that if he speaks, now if he told me probably to go up on top of the building, get in a corner, and pray, I probably could hear that. That'd be okay. But if he told me, suppose you was a prophet, And he's told you, he said, now I want you to take this moldy bread, strip your clothes off. I want you to lay out there in Central Park, eating this moldy bread naked. What would you say? Isn't it, isn't it funny how God don't sound like God when you don't want to do it? Huh? Because he had a prophet like that. Hmm? Isn't it strange, though, if I'm going to be in the Bible, I want to be a character, I'm not choosing him. 
make me David. <laughs> but I don't want to be the man laying on the eating moldy bread. Because see, like I said, could God tell you that? I want you to eat this moldy bread for the next 30 days. I want you to sleep on one side. Don't, don't turn over. Could he tell you that? But yet you'll read this Bible and you'll say, man, I'm going to be like the Hebrew boy. I'm going to be in the fiery furnace. No sooner somebody light a match, you go. <laughs> huh? Yeah, the match lit and you gone. Why? <laughs> That's a good story there. No, nah, I don't want to be there. I ain't going to be in there. No, nah, don't put me in the fire furnace. Come on. We got to bring this thing to reality. Is God your creator? And if he is your creator, is he upholding everything in your life by his word? Because I don't believe his word can fail. No kind of way. And, it, and, and if it failed, it's still going to look like victory. But I don't think it can. Because even when, it, even when God looks wrong, he's right. He looked wrong a lot of times, haven't he? I said, he's looked really wrong a lot of times. Ain't God looked wrong a lot of times? Yeah, yeah. See, you might as well go and say yeah. Yeah, because we, looked, we perceived it wrong. But God looked the same irregardless. You know, he, he does take on seem a different form. You know, when they saw him in a storm, he didn't look the same when he was breaking bread. Matter of fact, when he was in a storm, and this is the reason why I allow, if you get your mind set on a certain way that God has to work, that's how you get messed up. Because faith is not trying to repeat what they done yesterday. And so you get messed up because when God shows up in a different form, you're going to miss him because you always remember how he looked when he was breaking bread and blessing the fishes and loaves. He looked entirely different. They said when they was in the storm on the sea, said they thought he was a, a ghost. They didn't know he was real. And he said he would have passed by them, but Pete had... The audacity to call holler. Hey! <laughs> I wonder how many times have you passed us by like that? Because we didn't know that he looked like that. We was expecting God to look a certain way. We expected him to come a different way. But God has so many ways of expressing himself, even with us. That's why you should be the expressed image of God. You should be what, however Jesus would express himself. That's what you should be expressing. Did you see Jesus call fire down from heaven? Have you tried to express yourself such as that? God, you ought to get him. Bring fire down. Burn them. That's not an expression of Christ. Sometimes we raise the decibels of our voice and we think if we say it mean that somehow it gives more power to it. The harder I say it. Press God, you dirty little wretched sinner. You think you've seen, did, did you ever see in all of Jesus preaching him do that? No? Did you, anywhere he preached in this Bible, did you see him do that? No? He was just as calm. Don't even seem like he had a lot of decibels in his voice. Maybe he had a special voice or something. But it seemed like he just calmly, you know, going to preach to the lady. Hey, I wish, why don't you give me a drink of water? Man, what a way to take a text. 
How do you start a sermon asking for a drink of water? You know how many options we miss in ministry because we felt we didn't have the title? Sometimes it's just a conversation. We'll do more ministering than a preacher will behind a pulpit. Jesus started the conversation, and guess what? The next thing you know, you're talking about he had church, the church of one. Isn't it strange what he does when he expresses himself? Isn't it strange what we do when we express ourselves? Because we got a lot of stuff going on now. Man, you need to express yourself. That's been our problem. We expressed ourselves all right. But he didn't call you to be your expression. We were to express him, the creator, the one that created the new image in you. That's his expression. Question, statement. I'm going to let you go. We could go a lot further. I, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he was a little bit rough. Yeah, he, well, I, well, I, I was really talking. About, he didn't really go in there and minister that day. He, yeah, he, he, he was doing it in love. Sometimes love looks ugly too, but <laughs> he, he was kind of rough on them a little bit. But I think if, if we really understood how turned off God was to that practice. If we un really understood how turned off he was. Because of everything they had even done in his name was so void of him. They never really understood his spirit. Nor able to express him whatsoever. They had more dog day programs than you can ever think of. All kind of things. They added more stuff. You, you know, when you go back and read the history of this and realize how much stuff they added, you know, I'm talking 613 editions. When they added all this stuff in, you know, catch you so that every time you got ready to write a letter, a Hebrew letter, you got to take and wash your hands. Uh, everything they done looked so sanctified, but yet God said I was never pleased with them. I was never pleased. So you know what it tells me? There's only one place to find the pleasure of God and the pleasing of God, and that's what he already declared. 